Okay, so this is lesson 2-7, which is linear quadratic systems. Our essential question is, how can you solve a system of two equations or inequalities in which one is linear and one is quadratic? So for this first example, it says, how many solutions can there be for a linear quadratic system? So this illustration um, talks about how we can have a different y-intercept for our linear function that could create three different situations. So you can see one situation is that we have two solutions. So that would be if we had, like if we made B four, um, then it's going to cross the parabola in two different spots. So we would have two solutions. Um, if we had our B value is negative one, you can see that this one is crossing in one spot, so they're intersecting in one spot, so we'd have one solution. And then you can see the purple line doesn't intersect with the parabola at all. So if we made our B value negative four, um, we would not have a solution, so we'd have no solution. Okay, so then it's how can you use substitution to solve this system? So we're going to do substitution just like we would if we had two linear equations. My cat is meowing right now. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to, um, you can take, so this is equal to y. So I can actually take this entire thing and plug it in right there for y. In my notes, I solved the second equation, the linear equation for y, and then I plugged it in so one equation was equal to the other. Either way, you're going to get the same answer. So if I plug this y value, not circle that part, if I plug the 3x squared plus 3x minus 5 in for y, so this would be 2x minus parentheses 3x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 3. So then I'm going to distribute the negative. So this would be 2x minus 3x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 3. Then what I need to do is, um, this is a quadratic because I have an x squared in there. So I want to get everything over to one side, combine like terms. But I want that x squared part to be positive. So I'm going to move it all to the right hand side. So this would become positive 3x squared. If I move the 2x minus 3x, that'd be negative x. If I move it to the other side, it's going to be positive x. And then the 5, if I subtract that from both sides, I get minus 2. So then we have a quadratic. We can try to factor this. So we can say what two numbers multiply to negative 6 and add to 1. So that would be negative 2 and 3. So I can write this as 3x squared minus 2x plus 3x minus 2. I can group my first two terms and my last two terms. I can factor out an x. And I can factor out a 1. So then my factors would be x plus 1 and 3x minus 2. So now what I have to understand is those are, again, those are my factors, not my solutions. So then that would mean x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 2 thirds. That is not my answer. I'm not completely done with this because we're trying to find the two points where these two graphs intersect. So that means we need to then plug these x values in to find our y. So if we do that, we get the point, if we plug negative 1 in, to either equation, probably the top one because it's already y equals. So you do 3 times negative 1 squared plus 3 times negative 1 minus 5, and you get negative 5. And then if I plug 2 thirds in, I get negative 5 thirds out. So those are my two solutions. And you could always verify this by going to Desmos and typing in 3x squared plus 3x minus 5, and then you would also need to take the second equation and solve it for y, so that way you could um, plug that into Desmos as well and see where those intersect. Make sure that they are intersect at the correct points that you got algebraically. Okay? And then the last thing is solving a system of inequalities where we have one quadratic and one linear function. 
So we are going to, just like always with inequalities, we are going to graph this. Okay, so for the top one, if I'm trying to graph and I'm not, so that is not in vertex form, so it's not super simple to see what that's going to look like, I'm going to go ahead and just make a table. So I want to know, let's plug in one, two, three, four, five. So if I plug in 1 into my top equation, into negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 10, I get 0. If I plug in 2, I get 6. If I plug in 3, I get 8. And if I plug in 4, I get 6. If I plug in 5, I get 0. So the reason I chose 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I will give you a hint here, is I actually graphed it. No, I didn't graph it. I went to my calculator and I used the second graph, which is going to give me a table. So I used the table of values and I looked to find the high point, which was at 3, 8. So I knew that that's going to be the vertex of my parabola. So you can see the symmetry in the table. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see the, that on either side of the 8 is 6 and on either side of the 6 is a 0. So you can kind of see that um, parabola shape even in the table. So I'm going to graph this. So I'm going to go to 1, 0, 2, 6, 3, 8, 4, 6, and 5, 0. Okay, so now we look at the symbol right there, and it says that it is less than. So there's no or equal to. That means I'm going to use dotted, dashed lines, dotted or dashed to represent that parabola. So that means that all of the points along the edge of the parabola are not solution points. Okay, now it also says that it is less than. So let's see if I, so that means that everything in here is going to be shaded. If it was greater than, it'd be above the parabola, so it'd be everything on the outside. Okay, so now I need to graph my line. So I'm going to use that cover-up method to graph that. So if I cover up the y, I have 4x equals 4, which means my x-intercept is at 1, so right here. And then if I cover up the x, I have y equals 4, so my y-intercept is right here. Again, this is not or equal to, so I am going to use a dashed line to connect those two points. Okay, and then this, um, if you're not sure if it's going to be above or below, you could plug in a point. So maybe I plug in the point zero, one, two, I plug in point zero, five. So if I plug in zero for x and five, five is greater than four, so that means that part would be shaded. So if I do this, I'm going to shade above everything above the line. So you can see that the solution region is this shape right in here. So any point would be in that double shaded region. Okay, so that is a system of linear and quadratic inequalities.